I believe that Chloe's story is bigger than Chloe. Kristen and I met actually online. I could see the mother in Kristen, and that's something that I've always wanted. Like, I've just always wanted to be a dad. I have always been there for, for Cole and, and uh, always been dad to him since I came in the picture. I got the total package when Kristen and I got together. We had been together, I guess, about three years mm -hmm. when um, Kristen found out she was expecting. Everything was going swimmingly well, and then it was just a typical appointment you would have with any other baby. Um, and they were trying to get a heartbeat, um, and they were trying to hook me up to a monitor, but they couldn't quite get the heartbeat, and so they thought that perhaps she was just holding the umbilical cord. They wanted us to go over to Rochester to see a team of specialists over there. I don't think we had anything really like in our heads besides like, oh, this is just like a little hiccup. It's nothing that's going to be life-changing. I remember he asked like, do you guys know why you're here? And our naiveness at that point in time, yeah, we're, she was holding on to the umbilical cord and so we just needed to get a better, better look at things and see what's going on with her heart. And, and he says, well, that's true, but there's some other things going on. It was kind of like he took this sheet of paper and kind of unrolled the scroll of all of the things that, you know, that they had concerns about. You're excited for your first one to be born. And then to start hearing the doctor run down all of these concerns and giving you the option of, do you want to end this pregnancy? You know, I said, well, we've still got a heartbeat, right? And I, he said, yeah, she's still got a heartbeat. And I said, well, then we have something to be thankful for. Life is where we're, what we're choosing. Like there's, there's no question. Whatever happens, we're gonna use that and be positive. Your outlook on it is, is what determines the future for that. She was born at the end of the 39th week. So it was the, on a Friday, I believe, in the morning. Chloe was uh, born at five pounds, 14 ounces. Yep. So the first time Kristen actually got to see Chloe was behind you know this glass box. I could stick my hand in, I could feel her hand, but I couldn't hold her. This is Chloe. Like, this may not be what you expect or the situation that you had drawn up in your mind, but in order to be the best dad and the best mom to Chloe, we have to embrace this. We have to eat, sleep, breathe this stuff so that we can competently take care of her and make sure that she's living the best life she possibly can. Going home should be an extremely exciting experience, except we have a caravan of nursing staff following us to our front door. It was a complete different way of life from then on. Every day is extremely different. Um, even though you want to have a schedule, you have all these things that you want to do for her, that you want to have her a part of, um, it varies and it changes. When she is awake, she gives us those moments and that is what fills our cup. She'll bring her hand up and, and wave at you. Each time she waves, it's like a celebration of right. Chloe's waving, like, hi, Chloe, how are you? Like, I see you waving. I'm sorry. She keeps waving every time you say, Are you waving, Dee? Waving. I love you. <laughs> you know, that first week that you're home, nurses aren't showing up for shifts. They're calling out or they aren't calling out and you just, you know, are figuring it out for yourself that right. nobody's coming. It makes it really hard to keep going into your everyday job. I think it was pretty natural for us and an easy decision to make. Easy because we knew that we could do it, but such a difficult position um, to be in because we all of a sudden lost our income. And I'm going to be at home to help to provide that care, you know, for Chloe and, and to be the overnight nurse. How do we do this? How do we make ends meet? I was asking around for just the friends that we had made in the NICU, um, and they had recommended Spare Key and their program Help Me Bounce. We thought that that could be, you know, the, the thing that helps us. You know, at first we thought, great, if we can get assistance for a month, that would be huge. Help Me Bounce has been a so instrumental. It's been a lifesaver. It has kept 
our roof over our heads and helped us be able to stay afloat. There's so much stress that comes with, you know, the special need life and Spare Key has helped us to be able to start to live that dream. Those are some of the things that we're looking forward to this year is being able to, to build a bigger community to be able to help out other families. I'm abundantly grateful because he wouldn't be here otherwise. He would be at work all day and I get to share those moments with him. And I'm just so appreciative that Help Me Balance has allowed us to have you here and to make it work. Well, we wouldn't be here without <laughs> them and we're so appreciative of that opportunity to be able to live our best life and for to be able to be here for Chloe and help her live her best life possible. You know, we just want to say thank you so much to Spare Key, to Help Me Bounce, to donors like you um, that have made it possible for us to be able to have a roof over our head, to be able to take care of our child, to be able to build those memories and have those memories um, with her. There's not a price tag that you can put on that. Um, and we are so thankful and appreciative of all that you do, of all that you've given to make it possible for us. Thank you.